In this lecture, we want to continue using the bind operator to build more examples so that you get a better feel for how would you use it in practice. So let's think of how do we design a stack machine using effectful operations. So let's consider the following code, right? In this code, I'm going to define, I'm going to assume that there is a global stack. And this is essentially the model of um, stack-based processors, such as the JVM or the C Python interpreter. If you look at how Python and Java are implemented, you have the surface language, say Java, say Python, and then what you have is a compiler that will take the source code, say a Java program, and will generate a binary representation of your program, which is really the fact that it's binary or human readable doesn't really matter. What really matters is that it, it is closer, it's an abstraction that it will be closer to what ultimately the processor will execute. There is a short and, and notable, noticeable difference, which is regular x86 processors, they just have registers to store you know, t local temporary uh, computations. And that's what you use to, if you have an integer variable, that will be translated as a register in your uh, processor. But if you have a stack machine, which is what um, the JVM and C Python interpreter are, these are, they do not have registers and instead they have just a global stack which they use to either push values to and pop values to. And if you wanna, let's say, let, let's look at this example where you want to do the multiplication of two values. What you have to do is you need to pop two values from the stack and then you need to do push the resulting value out of it. So the idea is that you never have um, registers, but instead you use the, the stack to do all your computation. So a Java compiler and a C and the Python compiler, what it does is it generates bytecode, which is just this lower level intermediate, lower level code that is uh, just operates on a stack. So the example I'm giving you is an example of such a pseudocode for um, a stack-based program. So let's see what it does. The stack-based program is defined in the following excerpt. And let's say we have uh, the multiplication implemented as is here. So let's see what it does. What we want to do is if we want to multiply 2 by 5, we push the number 2 into the stack. So this would be the primitive operation of the stack machine, then you would push number five onto the stack, and then you would perform the multiplication. And what multiplication does is it pops two operations and pushes the multiplication of them. So usually this is a primitive of your virtual machine or of your stack machine. Uh, and then if you want to multiply, you know, 10 times two, so if you want to do two times five times two, you would push two and five, multiply, push the other two onto the stack, and then multiply. This second operation will pop the result of these three instructions and multiply them together, right? So I hope the intuition makes sense to you. I'm gonna paste it here in this example. And now what we're gonna try to do is represent this stack machine as a series of effectful operations. So we're still going to use that EFF, and now we're not going to use a stack, uh, sorry, a heap, and instead we're going to use a stack, Re rather just a list. So let's see how we could do this. We want to implement two operations first, right? The first one performs a push, and the second one performs a pop. The way I'm describing it, I'm saying that the push takes one, one parameter and the re its result is just void. So it's, the result is nothing. The pop operation, what it does is 
takes the top value of your stack and returns as a result the top of the stack, right? As you would expect. So what would the state be? The state in this case, let's just consider it to be a list of numbers. So how do I write a list of numbers in Racket? Well, I just use cons for that, right? So how would I define push and pop as effectful operations? Let's think. So remember what, what we did before, we used the heap. So remember how we defined a number. The way we defined the number was we did define, and then we did a number that took a number n, what that did was a heap allocation, right? And what the heap allocation did was given a certain heap, you would allocate number n. So because this is an effectual operation, it would take a lambda, which is the heap that I'm that represents the actual state that I'm operating on. And doing a define of num actually returns a lambda that given a state then allocates that number onto the stack, on the heap. Right? So now we want to do something similar, but instead of a heap, now we have a list of elements. Right? So let's see, how would we do a push and a pop? Okay, so a push, define push. A push, what is the parameter of a push? Let's see, the parameter is just an n, a number n. Okay, so push should just take a number n. It's going to be very similar to how we implemented alloc. So how would we define it? So this is a effectful operation so we have to whenever we call this it should return a function right and what does this function take it's going to take the state which is going to be a stack and then it's going to return always an effect okay so an effect so what is the first parameter of the effect it's going to be the memory and the second parameter is going to be the result so the effect what is going to be the new state? The new state is going to be adding an element to the list. So now I'm going to add n to the list, to the stack. Our global state is now, as I said before, this is a stack machine, so the global state is just a stack. So if we want to push, we're, we're just going to do a cons on the global state and add an element to it. So what this does is, let's look, what is the return value of, of push? It's just going to be void. So let's do void. Okay. So this is our effectful operation. Let's just call that. If I do push of 10, what does that do? Lecture 28. If I call push, that just returns this inner lambda, right? So what push is returning is an operation, the effectful operation that when given a, st a state, so let's call this define push 10. Okay. So now push 10 is parameterized on the, on the, st on the stack. So for every, any stack, it's going to do a cons on it, basically. So if I want to call push 10, I do push 10 and I pass, let's say an empty list. What that's going to do is going to return a list with just 10 on top. Okay. So stack my new state is 10, the result is void, which is what we're returning, right? So we really don't care about that result. So let's say I wanna do two pushes. How do I do that? Well, let's see, I do push. I wanna do two pushes. Fine, push, push. Okay, what do I want? N1 and N2. I could do this in two ways, right? The easy way, the direct way is I just do EFF, cons of N1, cons of N2. Actually, you, you might want to do, kind of depends on how you want to add the order. Okay, and the result, let's say it's void. So one way is you do it like this, which is directly, right? So now I created a push, push, then, and if I want to do, okay, push, push, and I want to do 10, 20, and if I pass a list with empty, what that does, it returns an EFF, 
with 10 and 20. Okay, so if I wanna remember, I, I implemented that function called run state. I can use run state here. I just need to change, remove the contract because now it's no longer for a heap. It works for anything. So let's see if this works. If I remove the contract. Let's see if I can use it here. What do I do? I do run state. And I do push push 10. What does that do? First thing is going to be the effectful operation. And then where is my run state? Oh, first I'm, I need to give the, the state and second the, the operation. So it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be the global state. What I'm going to do, I'm going to push 10 and 20. And then what run state returns is the state after these two operations. So let's see what this return should return 10 and 20. Right, there you go. Here is the new stack where 20 is the last element that was pushed. And this is the direct way, but we might want to do an indirect way, which is we want to compose push together with something else. So how do we do this? We actually learn how to use bind, right? So what bind, bind does is is allow us to compose effectful operations. So one way of, of building push push is doing bind, okay, of what? And one and two. Bind is already an effectual operation, so we no longer need to define explicitly what the lambda s is saying, right? Because it allows us to compose effectful operation. So we want to do a push of n1, and the result is going to be return in this lambda, right? And my lambda has to return the second parameter, returns the continuation. What do I do in the continuation? I push n2, right? So a second way of, of building this, do I care about this x? Well, this x is the result of doing a push. What is the result of doing a push? It's just a void. So we really don't care what that does. So if we just call this, it returns 10 and 20. So it's exactly the same thing, but here is explicitly doing, um, building an effectful operation. And here is building an effectful operation using the bind construct that allows us to thread, combine two effectful operations together and still have access to the results, which here we are discarding. Okay, so we've done push push which is interesting. So now let's try to implement multiplication. So multiplication takes no parameters and it pops two elements and then performs a push of multiplication. So let's try to do that. How do we do that? There are two ways to it, right? We can try the direct way and then we're gonna do uh, using bind. So let's do mult. Mult is an effectful operation takes no parameters, so we can just write mult. Lambda, so it takes a lambda, which is the new st the state. What do we do from there? Ah, we need to pop. We haven't defined what pop is. So let's define what pop is. Okay, so to be able to implement multiplication, we need to implement pop. We did implement push, so now let's try to implement pop. Okay, so what pop does, pop is, takes no parameters, so we could define it like this, right? It's an effectful operation, so we take, it takes a, a state, a stack, and what we do, we take, what do we do? We have to return an EFF, right? Okay, so we know that we need to return the EFF. Here is going to be the state, and here is going to be the result, right? So now let's try to think what each one is. So this is the stake that we have, right? The state, the state, which is a stack. What do we want to do? We want to take the state, we want to take the top element of it, and that's going to be the result. Okay, so the result's going to be the top of the, of the, of the stack, which because we are using a, a list for that, we can just do 
first of s, right? So first of s is going to return my top, my first element of the list, which is effectively the top of the stack. Okay, so then what is the side effect of performing a pop? The side effect of performing a pop is making your stack smaller, one element. So how do we do that with a list? Yes, it's very simple. We just do rest of s. So if you do rest of s, what ends up happening is if I have 20 and I do rest, I get this, which is effectively performing a pop on my stack. First is going to return 20. So let's see what happens to this list. So we have run state. Okay, and let's say I have a, a list with 10 and 30, and I perform a pop. I no longer need this. What do you think it's going to happen? So we perform a pop. This is my global state. What is going to be the return of run state? Let's see. It's just going to be the, re the rest of the list, right? Because run state just returns the list. So now let's see if, if I actually call pop directly. How do I do that? Press pop. And the parameter of pop is the heap. It's the state which in this case is the stack. So what does pop return? It returns an EFF with a new state that takes out 20. And my result is going to be 10. Okay, that's interesting. So now let's try to do pop pop, which just pops two elements. Right, so how would we do that? Okay, if we do a pop, we want to do two pops. Where should we store them? Well, we want to try to do this operation. Why don't we just try to do this first bit, which is let's do two pops and then just a the multiplication. We won't do the, the push. Okay, so let's do the fine pop pop mults, which is just these two and this operation. Okay, so what do we do? We have to do a pop, then we have to do a pop, and then we have to do x plus y, right? So let's think about bind for a moment. So what does bind do? Bind, you do bind of an effectful operation, right? And then the second, the second parameter is going to be a lambda that takes the result of whatever effectful operation you gave it, right? So if I gave it a pop, the result of a pop is the top of the list. Okay, that's cool. So this is effectively getting the x. So if I want to do my second pop and I want to get the, its result, I could do a second bind. I want to do bind, and now I have y, right? Okay. And now, I'm kind of stuck here, right? How do I return x and y? Okay, if I want to return x and y, and then I have to have something that returns a value, right? It just represents a single value, but it has to be an effectful operation because that's what how that's the API that we're building on. We want to build an API all based upon effectful operations. So what would be an effectful operation that performs no side effects. We can call that a pure operation. Okay, so let's let's side put this to the side because we have no way of returning that final value. And now let's think, okay, so I want to do a define of another effectful operation that takes some value and just returns it. Okay. So it's not, it's going to be an effectful operation. I'm going to take a state. What do I do with this state? Okay, let's see. I have to return an EFF. So do I if this is something that performs nothing, right? It doesn't change, it's effect, side effect free. So whatever state you give it as input, that's what I'm gonna return. That's I'm not changing my state. What is the result? This is what I want to return, so that's gonna be my re result. Okay, so this is gonna be my result, so I need to 
if x is going to be the result. This lambda s is just converting my result x as an effectful operation. Okay, does this make sense? So let's see what we do. If we do pure of 10, what does that return? It returns a lambda, right? It just returns this inner lambda. Okay, so let's call that. Okay, so now let me see what happens if I do run state. Um, and the first thing is, let's do a list with one, two. And I just do pure of 10, of 20. What does that do? It doesn't change the state. So the state I'm going to get back should be one, two again, right? Okay, so that, that's cool. Does not change state. That works as expected, but let's see, let's just pass to pure 20, my initial state, which is list one, two, and let's see what's the result of that. Sorry, what is the return value of that? It's gonna be an EFF. The state is the same as the input, exactly like we expected, and the result is 20. Okay, so now we have a way to return a value. Right? We want to be able to set the result somehow. How do we set the result? We set the result with pure. How do we do this? We do, okay, so here I did a pop, and then the return of that pop is going to this parameter of lambda x. What that must return is an effectual operation. We want to be able to store the y somewhere. So we perform another pop. We take the y, and now I want to return x plus y. So how do I do that? I do pure. Of course, this is bracket, so it has to be prefix. Okay. Wow, what a mouthful, huh? So now I want to call this pop pop molt. So let me see how we do this. We create run state, right? We want to run this. The effectful up, first we want to give an initial state. So let's say we want to do, so if we were going to do multiplication, let's do two times three. So we have two elements in my, in my stack. I want to do pop, pop, mult. I want to run this, this instruction set, right? So this just is building an eff effectful operation. What do you think is going to happen? Please pause the video and try to answer this. So what happens is we're going to do a pop, we're going to do another pop, and then we're going to push. We're not going to push anything, so we're just going to return the result, right? So in fact, when we run this state, what we get is what is the final state of this? Well, it's an empty stack, right? Because we performed two pops. So let's see if that's the case. Okay, so it's an empty sta state. So if we add another a stack with three elements, it should just return four. And indeed it does. Okay, so now I wanna actually see the EFF being returned. So if I wanna see that, I call, um, I call this and I pass as a parameter. This, now I call this. What do I get? I get the stack, which is four, right? So I, I did two pops. My output state is gonna be just the stack with four, and the result is six, which is two times three. That is great, right? So now I think we're almost ready to be able to implement this multiplication. How do we do it? to do it now we want to do okay we want to do define mult okay one thing we can do is okay first we could do a, a pop pop mult so what that's going to do it's going to do this operation this operation and finally this operation so if we want to take the x plus y we need to bind it right so we're going to bind whatever the result of that is going to be lambda lambda x times y 
Okay. Call this R. Okay, which is X times Y. Now what I want to do, I want to push R. I have defined already. So what we do now, we do uh, alt. Okay, so now let's call run state. We pass malt and we do a list with two and three. So what should this do? It does two pops and a push. So it, it should return a new stack that just contains six. Let's see. Ah, always forget to flip the arguments. <clears throat> okay, let me find this. Okay, I got six back. I can actually call malt and pass this list to see what is the result. What do you think is going to be the result? Recall that the final operation is a push so what should the result be try to answer that and pause the video okay so the result of performing a the final push as we recall a push is void so the result of this should be a void so let's see and yes it is it is a void so now let's put another element let's say 10 now what should we see on this stack try to answer that it's going to be 6 and the 10 on, on the bottom, right? Because that's going to be remain intact. There you go. You have 6 and 10, because here you have a 10. Okay, so we wrote multiplication using, uh, using uh, pop, pop, mult. But we could write it directly. So let's do that. Do mult. Okay, a bit farther away than the actual code. So let's try to write the actual code. What do we do first? We do bind, then we do pop, then we have lambda x. We do pop, bind, and then we do y, lambda y, and then we do push times x, y. Okay, let's see if this still works. Six and ten, it did exactly the same thing. Okay, so we covered how we implemented pop. We covered how we implemented push. Push, sorry. We talked about how we implemented mult. So now let's try to implement the program. Our program is doing all of this. So in the slides, I made all of these. Um, Malt and all this as functions without parameters, but it's really a style option. There's really no difference. And in fact, since you're not uh, passing anything to it, just call, calling it malt without parentheses, it's perhaps faster, but it is, you know, sometimes you have parentheses, others you don't. It's less, um, it's less, it's less, um, it's less consistent. Okay, so now we want to be able to implement this re this bit of code. How do we do that? The last slide, no. What do I do? I define prog. I do bind. Bind of push to. What that returns is result of something. But we're not doing anything with the result value. Okay, so we're going to do R1 because we don't care about that. And what we do, we do a push 5. Oh. Okay, we also don't care about the return value of that. R2. Then we need to do another operation after that. So we need another bind. Hopefully, for the sake of...
this would be these two pushes and then a multiplication right now i have another lambda r3 then i have a bind and i do push two and then i have lambda r4 and finally i do a multiplication Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to run this. I want to run state and I want to start with an empty list, which is an empty stack, and I want to run this program. The result should be 20 on the stack. I got 20 on the stack, which is great. Okay, so this whole thing works. Hope you understood understood more or less how we did bind. The interesting thing of this example is that we actually don't really care about how about this the results of pushes in mults, right? So can we do this a bit better? Yes, of course we can. We just need to be, to write yet another uh, operator. One that performs exactly what bind does, but just ignores the results. So how do we sequence two stateful operations? while ignoring the results. Okay, we do define sequence. We have operation one and we have operation two, right? Two stateful operations. So how do we call them? The result's gonna be a effectful operation, takes a state. What do we do with that? Well, we take, um, there are two ways of doing this. First, I'm gonna do directly and then I'm gonna use the bind operator. Okay, so if we do directly, what we do, we do I'm going to call op1 and I'm going to pass the initial state. So what that returns is going to return an EFF. But for the EFF, what I want is the met s1. I'm going to call this s1, s1. What is s2? s2, if op returns an EFF, right? I want to do EFF state of that. That is S2, and now what I want to do is I want to call S op2 with S2, right? So that's all great. So now let's try to do Okay, so now what do I want to do? One thing we can do is let's do two pushes, run state sequence of push with another push. We're going to do two pushes together. If we do two pushes, we have to do, we can do, have to initial stack, let's do list, an empty stack. Let's do a push of 10 and then a push of 20. Right, that's an easy one. If we run this, what do we get? 20 and 10. So now we can remove this. We don't or so this is how you se you sequence all of this. So the another version of frog would be we call sequence right? back of this. Now we don't no longer need any of that. Do sequence of this. We do sequence of this. We do sequence of this. Let's see if this still runs. Too many parentheses. Okay. Okay. It's still. Let me comment this out because we don't need more. Let's see if it still returns. 20, which should be the return value. The result should be 20. And it in, indeed it is, right? On this, my stack holds number 20. Uh, where did I put the last thing? Let's comment this out. Okay. Can we do better? We could do this even better, right? We could write another version of sequence that instead of, first let me do another thing. 
So we saw how to use sequence instead of bind. So now we don't have that result laying around. Um, next thing we can do to make this better is we could, instead of implementing sequence directly, let me comment this out, what we can do is we can implement it with bind. So we have a sequence we take, which takes op p1 and op2. What we do is bind of op1 and then the result is lambda of a result that we don't care about and we return op2. Okay. That's exactly what sequence is doing. It just ignores, it passes a function that ignores, discards the parameter of the result. Right, so let's see if this still works. Okay, it still returns 20, so it's still working. So another thing we could do if we wanted to make our API even nicer is this is still very morose to write. So maybe we want to write a, a sequence that takes a variable of a sequence of uh, elements. So how could we implement that? I leave that as a as an exercise for you to try. We could tr write a sequence star. Okay. to solve it yourself. What I want to be able to write is sequence star. Oh, actually, I already implemented it. <laughs> so I forgot about that slide. So yeah, if you look at this slide, you have a version that is revisited, and then you can write it all the way like this. OK, that's another version. So another thing you might want to do is, this is so common. This, If you start using effectful operations, um, what we would really like to write is something that is closer to an assignment and more distant than this, right? Because this X should be on the left-hand side as usually an assignment is. And effectively, what a bind is doing is just an assignment. It's assigning the result of um, an effectual operation to this X, right? And the continuation is going to be another effectual operation. So would it be, wouldn't it be nice to have a nicer syntax? And indeed, that's something we can do. Racket has this notion of macros, which we will learn in a future lesson. So we can, for now, just copy paste this. And this is a macro. So macro al allows you to do the syntactic sugar. Let's see if it's done properly. Yes. So now what we can do is, rather than writing malt like we did before, we can just write it like this. Of course, the version we wrote in this thing has no parentheses. So we write do, and then inside a do notation, so what, inside these do parentheses, we're going to write a sequence of uh, effectful operations. And whenever you see an arrow, what you're going to be doing is a bind. If you don't have an arrow, you're just performing a sequence, such as uh, this sequence that I defined here. So let's see if this works. We actually don't need parentheses here, just for consistency with the rest of the exercise sheet. And then what I want to do, I want to run state. I want to do a list. I want to do mult. One, two, three. What am I missing? Oh, I already defined malt. Actually, let me copy paste this up. If I run this, 
still works as expected. Uh, this works as expected. So two times three should be six. There you go. So still working as expected. And as you can see, this notation is nicer than this notation and closer to what we have here. So let me move. I'm going to move this around right to the beginning because this is not really important to understand at this point. Now let's compare the three versions. We have the pseudocode. We have the version with bind being called explicitly. And we have the version that uses bind behind the scenes and just applies some syntactic sugar so that it's nicer to your eyes. And it uses more of an infix notation. So you assign, you call pop, you assign the result to x, call pop again, assign the result to y, and then you perform a push where you multiply x by y. And everything works as expected. So let me... So we talked already about pure. So in summary, what we've been seeing is that we can use bind to thread these effectful operations and these effectful operations don't necessarily have to use a heap. In the first, in the last lecture, we looked at how we could use bind to thread multiple effective operations that were mutating a heap and returning a result. But now what we saw was that we mutated a stack, which is actually just a list. That's like the global state. And we had results which were new numeric values. So this is a more generic pattern. It's just about a pattern of how do we, in this case, what we've seen is how do we maintain a global state? And we abstracted away so that we can thread mutation, essentially. So we're hiding away we are able to describe a system. Let me go back to the example of, of malt. So you can write this very neat example where I'm saying that inside this do block, I have mutation going on. And whenever you have the arrow, that's an assignment. So this pop is going to perform some side effect. And this pop is going to perform another side effect. And this push as well. And this is known as the state monad because there's this global notion of state. And is what we're going to be uh, thread. That's what we've been threading on. So that's why pop and push mutate the state somehow, which is just a stack. So one thing that I ask you to try to think is try to implement uh, m apply, which is a monadic apply that takes a function and um, A list of effectful operations and then what does it do it should effectively if it should evaluate each effectful operation and then apply a function to their results so you can start thinking that you can actually build this library of the same kind of operations that we've learned like fold and map that we've learned on lists we could also implement them at the level of effectful operations so that would be really cool for you to try out as well and that's basically it. That's what I wanted to talk about in terms of monad. So the monad is basically just this way of abstracting an effectful operation. And you have the bind combinator, which is really the, the central engine of it, how you compose these effectful operations, and the fact that you can use them for various things. So far, we've been seeing how we can abstract away state, but we're also going to be able to learn, we're also going to learn how to use monads to abstract control flow um, and other similar things. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson.